useful chemical constituent, the element nitrogen, in such a form as to be readily assimilated and used by the body. These protein foods are absolutely essential for the building up and repairing of our body. Without them, there would be no development, and the animal would soon perish. These foods are sometimes called the nitrogenous foods. As examples of this class of foodstuffs, we have the white of an egg, which is very nearly pure protein, containing about 86% of water. Other proteins are the lean part of all meats and fish, the gluten in wheat, other grains also contain proteins, the casein in milk and cheese. Many other foods contain proteins. Some of the protein foods are cheese, 26%, peanuts, 26%, beans, 23%, meats, 19%, fish, 17%, eggs, 15%, wheat, 12%, oats, 12%, corn, 10%, bread, 9%, rice, 8%. A brief study of these percentages will indicate how substitution might be made. Cheese, beans, or even bread might at times be used partly or wholly in place of meat. Second, another important class of foods consists largely or entirely of what chemists call carbohydrates. The various sugars and starches are representatives of this class. Pure carbohydrates, such as the sugars and starches, do not contain nitrogen and can therefore not be substituted for proteins. They are called the heat and energy producing foods. The important foods of this class and their percentage of sugar or starch are cane and beet sugar, over 99%, hard candies, 96%, honey, 81%, jelly, 78%, raisins 76%, rice 76%, wheat 74%, corn 73%, oats 70%, molasses 68%, beans 60%, bread 53%, bananas 22%, grapes 19%, potatoes 18%, apples 14%. Third, the third important class of foods is known as fats. Lard, olive, and peanut oils are pure fats. They contain no nitrogen and will not do the work of protein foods. The function of the fats in metabolism is similar to that of the carbohydrates, namely to supply heat and energy. The fatty foods with a high percentage of fat are as follows. Lard, olive, and peanut oils, 100%. Butter, 83%. Bacon, 67%, walnuts, 63%, peanuts, 39%, cheese, 34%, cream, 19%, meat, 18%, eggs, 11%. These three classes of food principles alone are not sufficient to produce growth and energy in the human body. A small amount of a number of inorganic substances, called salts, is necessary. These salts are sometimes referred to as mineral matter. The chemist often uses the term ash and has reference to the residue after burning a food. Foods naturally contain the necessary amount of mineral matter or salts. The addition of common table salt to our foods is not necessary unless it makes them more palatable. Water, of course, is necessary in our diet and it plays a much more important part than is generally supposed or understood. Most foods contain water, and although some people seem to get along with practically no water other than what is contained in the solid foods they eat, most of us add water to our diet either as water or beverages that are largely water, such as tea, coffee, milk, or cocoa. The percentage of water is usually high in vegetable foods. Celery contains 95% water, milk 87%, oysters 86%, apples 85%, fish 80%, potatoes 78%, eggs 74%, meat 62%, bread 35%, cheese 34%, honey 18%, butter 13%. Lard, olive oil, peanut oil, and sugar contain no water. One often hears the statement that people do not drink enough water. This is no doubt true. 
I cannot let the opportunity pass without calling attention to the old but erroneous notion that water should be drunk between meals, not during meals. This idea that water at mealtime interferes with the digestive process is still quite prevalent, even among physicians. Newspaper and magazine food experts almost invariably tell us not to drink with meals. Let it be stated most emphatically that drinking water with our meals is not a harmful or undesirable practice, but is a decidedly beneficial one. This has been proved repeatedly by rigid scientific experiments. It is now known that water, and fluids generally, stimulate the secretion and flow of gastric juice. Water also materially aids and hastens the processes of digestion and assimilation. It is physiologically correct to start a meal by drinking water or eating soup. It has been proved that a cocktail or other high alcoholic drink at the beginning of a meal interferes with digestion. Nearly all foods contain more or less indigestible matter, which is classed under the term crude fiber. Although it is indigestible, 